Hello, hello everyone. How's it going? This is Immigration Attorney Momita. I'm coming to you live to talk to you about immigration and to see the questions that you may have on your mind today. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Momita Rahman and I am an immigration attorney. I have been practicing immigration law for the past 14 years and it is my pleasure to do the work that I do because I believe that immigrants make America great already. Thank you to each of you for being who you are, for coming here through all the hardships and trials and tribulations that you have gone through to be here to make America your home and for adding to the rich tapestry of this country with your customs, with your languages, with your beauty. Thank you so much. And if you have a question about your immigration case, about the immigration process, because I know that it can be very, very difficult. I know that it can also be very, very confusing uh, to those of you who are not immigration lawyers please go ahead and post your question in the box below and I will do my best to answer as many questions live that I can in the time that I have tonight. So go ahead and pop your question. And before I start answering each of your questions, I'm going to talk about something that may be relevant to you. My hot topic for today is, can you still file for VAWA or for a T visa, even if the partner that you were with has passed away? Let's go ahead and, and dive into this topic because it's really important for those of you who want to know more, who want to understand if you have any rights to file and get a work permit, get a green card. You want to know if these things are possible. If you were with somebody who was your romantic partner, but who took advantage of you, who hurt you, who threatened you, who really controlled your life. And you know that you might qualify for something, but you're afraid that you no longer qualify because your partner passed away. And you may think that all of that eligibility is now gone because they're no longer alive. Let's talk about that. And I'm going to talk about this in two parts. I'm first going to talk about it, about the T visa, and then about the VAWA. Now, the T visa is not just for persons who you were romantically involved in. If you worked for anyone, if you worked for anyone ever inside the United States, and this person was, uh, you know, like they were not a good boss, right? They threatened you. They uh, they don't pay you properly. They, uh, they lie to you all the time. They scare you with news about immigration and you essentially feel scared to to not listen to them this is a the classic trafficking scenario that may help you qualify for something called the t visa which is then a pathway to a, a green card in the future however the t visa the t visa situation can also apply to you if you are in a romantic relationship with somebody who treats you almost the same way now, many of you think that, how is that possible? It's my job to do all the cooking, all the cleaning. You know, it's my job to listen to my spouse, to my husband, to my wife, to make them happy. However, when you are an undocumented immigrant and your spouse, whether they have status or whether they're undocumented, if your spouse is taking away your money, uh, they hurt you if you don't do things around the house or if you don't do things in bed, if they, uh, if they tell you that it's your job to make sure that dinner is ready at 7 p.m. every single night, they get you out of bed no matter how late it is to force you to cook dinner or you have to take care of uh, their children or other people's children. If you have to go to work because they tell you to go to work and then you hand over their money to you, uh, your money to them, these can also be something that is a trafficking situation with your uh, with your partner. Now, if your partner has passed away, you may still be eligible to do a T visa because the law does not require for your uh, your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or fiance or girlfriend to be alive to do this. It only requires that you suffered this sort of treatment. And also we have to make our report to law enforcement about it. So even if law enforcement can't really do anything about it because they passed away, that doesn't mean that it's disqualified, okay? Now, when it comes to the VAWA application, if you're filing for VAWA because your spouse was a US citizen or a green card holder, then you do have a deadline of when you can apply. And if your partner has passed away, your deadline is going to be two years 
from the date of their death uh, to file for a VAWA. Now, don't be alarmed though, because let's just say that you wanted to have explored VAWA and you didn't file it in time, uh, how we may still be able to help save your case by doing a T visa as long as you meet the trafficking requirements, okay? If you are interested in learning more to see if you qualify, call our office at 212-248-7907 to schedule a case evaluation because we have to ask you a lot of questions and we have to see what we can do for you. And our goal is to make sure that we don't leave any stone unturned in searching for your immigration options. OK, um, let's go see. So that that's my hot topic of the day. Again, if you have been interested in finding out if you qualify for VAWA or for a T visa, but because that person involved has passed away and you were not sure that you did. Now is your this is your sign to go ahead and find out if you can go uh, if you should go forward with this case. So do give us a call, okay? 212-248-7907. And this is an election year. You know, time, time is it's it's time to do something about your status to actually at least find out what you qualify for. And I definitely urge you to to take action rather than sitting and 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 waiting more and more time because the more time that passes. Um, you never know when uh, things might might be too late for you to do. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and answer some questions. And for those of you, of you who are watching for the first time, thank you. Thank you for joining. My name is Mamita Rahman. I'm an immigration attorney who's been practicing immigration for the past 14 years. And if you want to make an appointment for a case evaluation, call us at 212-248-7907. I am live streaming on TikTok, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. So I appreciate your patience as I answer questions. Okay, from Jay Amores is asking, is there a way to avoid going to Juarez for the interview? Jay Amores, that's a great question. For those of you who are married to US citizens and you have an illegal entry, so uh, the lawyers that you have visited have told you that the only way for you to get your status is if you do the I-601 waiver, uh, I-601A waiver, uh, otherwise known as the perdón, and you have to leave, you have to go to Juarez or you know the, your country for the interview. There are sometimes ways for us to help you fix your status without you having to leave for uh, leave the U.S. to do your processing because we look at cases that don't require you to leave. We look at the VAWA uh, application, the T visa and the U visa, as well as we look at some other things like Section 245I, adjustment of status and military parole in place. These are the typical applications that don't require a person to actually physically leave the U.S in order to get their green card. So um, uh, Jay Amores, uh, whether or not you have to leave is going to depend on whether it's possible to do one of these cases for you. So I, I urge you to call us at 212-248-7907. Um, Kingdom is asking, I'm, I'm 18 turning 19. Can my step parent position for me? Um, Kingdom, um, at this point, yes. If you are under 21, you are still considered a child. And if your step parent is a US citizen, they can petition for you up until the age of 18. However, the one important thing is that um, your, your parents must have been married before you turn 16. I believe that is a requirement if you're a stepchild. Um, okay, um, Soft's World is asking, if I apply for a T visa and I'm not with my ex, will they come after him um, after they open a case? I don't wanna cause him any harm from Soft's world. Soft's world, I definitely understand that. Now there is a very important requirement and there is a very important part of the T visa, which is the requirement that we report the trafficking to law enforcement. Now law enforcement can be anything. It could be the FBI, it could be the Department of Justice. Jay Amores, thank you for the flowers. Uh, it could be local police officers. Now, normally when we have a T visa situation with a domestic relationship, usually what I feel is, is my experience is that most people like the FBI and police are not really interested in investigating this very far. Sometimes they might give you an interview, but they're not necessarily going to be pressing charges against them unless you allege that a crime has occurred. Um, and we could be very selective in deciding who to make the report to. Like, for example, if you report to the FBI, the FBI doesn't have the, the power to, to charge for, you know, uh, criminal criminal violations, right? They're investigating some other things like trafficking. So normally there's not really any harm that happens, but it's individual on a case by case basis and soft world. What I would encourage you to do is to just call us to let us help you explore this because you might have a T visa situation that doesn't actually involve your ex. Maybe you have a different situation. And even if that's the only situation for you, soft world, what I would recommend for you to consider is this. Number one, you are undocumented. 
you are without papers, you are without protection, you are at danger of deportation at any time, which is not an easy way to live, right? There's a lot of mental strain that, that comes upon you. You're, you're, you just have a lot of burden when you're undocumented and you have to do what is best for you, right? And I understand you don't wanna get someone in trouble. So what I would just recommend to you is to first explore to see what all of this will involve, okay? Call us 212-248-7907. Um, okay, let's just see. Uh, Tip 10 is asking, is it normal to not get a decision after submitting an RFE for four months from Tip 10 Chowang? Tip 10, uh, yes, it is. For those of you who have a case that's pending and in process and you got a request for evidence from the government and they haven't really uh, given you a decision yet, that is totally normal. Sometimes it takes up to six months to get a decision. But here's a little hot tip. If your case is outside of the normal processing time and uh, it's taking a long time to get a decision, even though you've submitted your request for evidence, I would say that this is a good time to, uh, to, to submit a USCIS service request. Uh, sometimes you can get congressional help involved uh, to try to speed up your case processing, okay? Um, all right, Gustavo, thank you for the, uh, for the follow. Um, how much do you need for an investor's visa from Zavala to add Zavala? I don't do investor's visas, but I believe it's either 500,000 or a million. Um, Abdul is asking, I had an interview for an I-485 almost a month ago and no progress on my case. How long should I wait? Well, after you get your interview or after you, you know, you submit, you know, you, you show up in person, usually they tell you that you should wait 120 days for a decision. Um, but my opinion is that, uh, you know, sometimes if your case is already outside of the normal processing time, you can sometimes do some additional requests. Um, let's just put this here. Um, all right, let's see. Um, I filed an I-751 on time. Will the receipt notice serve 48 months extension from Ruby Red? Yes, it will. Can you travel emergency if my case was pending on the BIA from Ashish? Um, Ashish, it depends what your case before the BIA was. If you were in removal, then no, you're still considered in removal until that's granted. Uh, Maria is asking, my dad was granted a work permit and renews every year, but he's disabled now in a wheelchair. Can that, um, can that change anything for him uh, from Maria? Maria, that is a good question. If your parent has received a work permit and he's renewing every year, can he get some other status, even if, uh, you know, especially if he's now in a wheelchair? And the answer to that is it's always going to depend, Maria. It's always going to depend on, um, first of all, what is the category under which he has a work permit? because then that's gonna help us rule out to see what he's eligible for. And second is for us to find out, is there anything else that he might be eligible for? So Maria, I recommend that you call us at 212-248-7907. Bumi Patel is asking how long a T visa is taking to get approved. Right now it's taking anywhere from a year to a year and a half. So it's actually going pretty fast. Um, I have been waiting for three years and I have not been called for an interview. Do you think it's better to wait or try to go to court? from uh, J.M. Truge. Uh, J.M. Truge, it depends on what the actual processing time is. Sometimes three years is like, you know, for VAWA cases, three years is the normal amount of time it takes to, to get a decision on the I-360. But let's say you filed an I-130 and your spouse is a U.S. citizen and you still don't have a decision. You know, that's something that we're doing now. We're suing the government. And uh, you know, if, if you're waiting three years, it might be ripe to file a writ of mandamus for your case. Um, I was hit by a car. Can I get a U visa? Even though they, they never found the person from Sessi. Sessi, um, you may be able to. It depends. You know, like sometimes, um, you know, that could be like a felonious type of assault. If you get hit with a car physically and you get hurt, um, it might be. Uh, I would just recommend for you to call us and maybe get a copy of the police report for us to help analyze. Um, I received two RFEs for medical and proof of marriage after one year. Is this normal from Thomas uh, Nyabwa? Um, Thomas, it could be normal. We have gotten multiple RFEs in some cases, but sometimes one thing that I've learned recently is that if you have a marriage case and you're getting multiple RFEs, you get one RFE and then like a year later, you get another RFE. Sometimes it means that your case is being transferred from location to location. So every time your case reaches a new office for processing, 
a new officer is looking at your case and they have questions and they're just not looking at, at everything carefully. So what do they do? They just issue a new RFE for you because they're not wanting to take the time to look at your case. So is it normal? It's not necessarily normal, but if you at least got your medical RFE, uh, that's a, that's to me, that's a good sign. Um, Molina flooring is asking, I received my prima facie determination. What's next Molina? Good. Uh, congratulations on getting your prima facie. Now, if you have filed for VAWA and you got a prima facie determination, your question is going to be what's next. When do I get my work permit? When do I have this and that now normally you'll usually do your biometrics first and then you get your prima facie. Once you get your prima facie, you probably want to give it another three months to five months, maybe to get your work permit because by the time you get your prima facie determination, usually five months have already passed. So give it another three to five months to get your work permit. Um, and then after you get your work permit, then you're going to wait the longest time. You're going to wait like a year and a half to two years sometimes to get your uh, decision on your I-360. So Melina, hopefully your work permit is going to be next. Okay. Um, let's see. If my work, if my from Romer, if my current wife has told me that she will never help me fix my status, I'm a deadbeat father and she wants me deported. Uh, Romer, look, I'm so sorry that you're going through that. I'm pretty sure you're not a deadbeat father. Um, if there, we've had lots of cases, and I know this to be true. If you are an undocumented parent and you're married to someone who's a citizen, and they're the ones who keeps telling you that you're a bad parent. You don't know any better. You are deadbeat. Yet you're working. You're working and you're struggling to provide for your family. You're doing the best that you can, even though you don't have a work permit, you don't have a green card. And on top of that, they're like, "Well, I'm not going to help you. <laughs> I'm not going to help you improve and or, or do anything better." Uh, it's it's almost like they want you to stay stuck in that situation so that they can beat down upon you. Uh, sorry to use that 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 phrase, but like what I mean is like they just want to to use that as uh, as a way to, to, to keep, to keep bringing you down, right? That's not fair. That is very manipulative. That's, that's controlling. Uh, it's also a uh, humiliation of its own sort. And this is actually, uh, for me, this is emotional abuse and it can help you qualify for VAWA Romer. So even if you don't have a legal entry, even if you have a permanent bar, please call us 212-248-7907. Now, if you're a parent, you have kids here in the U.S., you're undocumented. I know that your first first thought is always going to be about how can I be here for my family if I don't even have status? And that's true because if something happens to you, how will you stay protected, right? Especially if you're married to somebody who doesn't want to file for you, you can't rely on them, especially, especially if you end up in deportation, that same spouse is going to actually make it harder to obtain their help in your case. So it's better to take action now while you know that you can before things get to that elevated point. So Romer, call us at 212-248-7907. Um, Trick Shorts asking, saying, my wife refused to file my papers and she kicked me out of the house when she was seven months pregnant because I could not afford to pay $2,000 for her mortgage. Now she gave birth. And she will not identify me as the child. And on top of that, she's filed for child support. <laughs> Chooks, sorry to laugh, but you see how controlling this is? Not your wife wants to harm you emotionally further. She wants to hit you. She wants to hurt you where, where she can, right? She wants to hurt you even more by not putting you down as the, the father of the child. And she wants to ask you for child support. Um, look, this to me, this these are classic, classic controlling manipulative tactics. Tricks, if you have not yet filed for VAWA and your wife is a U.S. citizen or a green card holder, now is the time to do it, my friend. Now is the time to do it, and we would love to help you. Um, so call us at 212-248-7907. Farisha, um, at the moment, we are not doing um, any uh, asylum cases. So, But if you need a referral, you can call our office, and we'll refer you to somebody who's dealing with asylum cases too, okay? Um...
Um, form I-485 asks, have you ever been denied for admission? I answered yes because I applied for an ESTA two years ago and it was denied. Could it have any problems for my approval from Lola? Um, Lola's actually discussed this, this scenario with, uh, with one of my paralegals today too. So no, if you were previously denied your ESTA or you were even refused entry into the U.S. on your ESTA or your visa, uh, that does not make you inadmissible. That simply means you were denied entry. Now, if you were denied entry and you still came in through illegally, then that would make you, that would make you have a problem for your case unless you're doing something like VAWA. Um, or like a T visa that doesn't require you to have a legal entry. But simply answering yes to that question is not usually a problem. Now, the problem that most people usually will have is if they were denied admission and they try, you know, and, and they uh, are filling out their form R485 and then they say no, they say no instead of yes, and they're trying to hide the fact that they were denied admission, then that would be a problem because then that might turn into something called a misrepresentation or a fraud, which would cause you immigration problems. Okay. Um, have you heard uh, from George official? Yes, I have. I have heard about this, this, this attorney Kofi who filed lots of fake vow cases. I'm not, I'm not this attorney and <laughs> all of my cases are legitimate. Um, All right, Aliyah is asking, married for five years. I've been waiting for my I-751 approval since November 22. What should I do? I'm from Aliyah. Aliyah, it sounds like you filed your I-751 in November 2022. So it's been roughly a year and a half almost since you filed. That's actually normal. The normal processing time for the I-751 is almost two and a half years. So you're actually in, you know, you're in the proper frame of time. However, if you have since filing your I-751, if you got divorced, if you're separated from your spouse or you're having a hard time staying in your marriage because of what your wife uh, or your husband is doing to you, then it might be the right time to file for a waiver in your I-751 case. So you can call us at that time, Aaliyah. So the right thing for you to do is to actually take action uh, and call an attorney to find out what, um, what how you could actually convert your I-751 joint application to a waiver application. Okay, 212. 2487907. Rafiq is asking, can you do anything with an I-130? It was denied over 15 years ago from Rafiq. <laughs> Rafiq, once, once, when immigration denies an application, you have a deadline to appeal. So your appeal is usually 30 days or 33 days, depending on what was denied. Um, and if you miss that deadline, then you can't, you can't appeal it. However, sometimes you can just file again. You can file a second time. So if, you, if you're still eligible for the I-130, Rafiq, then maybe you can file for that instead. Call us so we can investigate your case with you, 212-248-7907. Uh, um, I am uh, Damien. My mom was caught by immigration officers when she was crossing the border. Can she still apply for a VAWA? Um, from a I am Damien. I am Damien, yes. It doesn't matter how many times you cross the border. That does not disqualify you from filing for VAWA. However, what we have to look at is to see if your mom has something called a permanent bar because everyone's goal is to get the green card. So the border crossings and getting caught, that may pose a problem for the green card, not the VAWA. Now, if, you, uh, if you've been watching my videos and you might already know, but if you don't, uh, let me explain a little bit. VAWA is filed on the form I-360. It gives you the right to, to live here, uh, you know, not be supported, uh, to, to get certain benefits and to get a work permit. However, if you want to get a green card, you have to file this form called the I-485 application to adjust your status. That's the green card. Now, oftentimes we'll file both of these together uh, because without getting the VAWA approved, you can't file for the green card. Um, so when you're filing for the green card, if you have certain problems like an illegal entry or a permanent bar, or if you were caught or deported in the past, then that creates a little bit extra steps sometimes. Sometimes we can uh, we can still get you the green card and other times we have to look for uh, some alternate alternative measures. So call us Damien 212-248-7907. Um, uh, if you're DMing me, uh, from, uh, Sylvester, uh, Sylvester, we get too many DMs to respond to people. So just call us at 212-248-7907. Are you only taking VAWA from Ella Toya? Ella Toya, we're taking VAWAs, I-751s, marriage cases, T visas, and U visas at the moment. 
can I apply for H-1B visa from two companies while on OPT? Um, uh, Raj, uh, I can't really answer that question. It's, it's a little complicated and I'm also not doing those cases. So I have a lot less knowledge now. Okay. Miss Poppy Flower, what if my wife refuses to finish my case before I get my two years visa? I just got my work permit two days ago from Miss Poppy Flower. Miss Poppy Flower, I'm so sorry that you're in that situation. And this is actually a very common situation where you might have started the case with your spouse. You filed for your green card. Maybe you already got your work permit. You're about, you're just waiting for your interview and your, your, your spouse does not want to continue your case. When you are in that situation, time is of the essence because the minute you get your interview, um, you know, your case could, could get denied if, if you don't do things the right way. So anyway, if your husband or your wife does not want to continue your case, even though it's already been paid for, you've already filed it and you're just waiting for the government to take action, you may be eligible to file your case uh, for a new case called the VAWA case by yourself because typically when your spouse doesn't want to continue or they're you know, making demands of you that make it hard or they tell you that they're not going to go to the interview, these are usually controlling tactics that, that are basically emotionally abusive. And there might be a lot of things happening in, in your marriage. So Poppy, call us 212-248-7907 to see if we can help you do that, okay? Um, Xander V is asking, how can I contact your firm? Um, is it via phone? phone Phone or email. Uh, the best way to contact us is by phone, which is 212-248-7907. If you send us a DM, uh, we are not responding to DMs on Instagram because we get way too many messages to respond to people. Um, but you can also send us, uh, go to our website, which is www.rahmanlawplc.com and send us a message through our contact form. Um, so those are the best two ways to, to contact us. Cielo Beltran, how long does it take to get the prima facie? About five months after filing. How long is the processing time for N400 from Robbie? Uh, Rob Jim, uh, it can be from about six months to eight to 10 months. My husband has DACA and is waiting for a green card. Does he need to renew his DACA before it expires from Luz Perez? Luz Perez, I recommend that you maintain you continue, anyone who has DACA, who is filing anything else, I always recommend that you continue to keep renewing your DACA application until your other status is secured because God forbid something happened to the other process. If you don't renew your DACA right now, then you can't restart that process in the future. Um, so keep yourself safe, keep renewing your DACA application until your new application is approved, okay? Um, hi, Nana. I didn't see your comments before. Hi, Nana. How are you? Um, all right. So uh, your staff assured me I can I can travel with my advanced parole. Can you please verify that for me because I'm still scared? Uh, okay. So Nana, here's the thing, and this is for anyone who has advanced parole who wants to travel. Advanced parole is never 100% guaranteed. But in for for us with the hundreds of clients that we've had, we have never had a problem. Uh, with persons returning. However, if you have any sort of criminal history or charge or conviction, I highly recommend that you don't travel on advanced parole because that is something that is going to be flagged in the system when CBP checks your, uh, your fingerprints when you're coming through the airport, and that can pose a problem for you. However, even if you have no problems, my advice, Nana, is if you are scared, if you are nervous about traveling on advanced parole, sometimes that risk, that 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 anxiety is not worth going through. So um, sometimes I would say if you're that afraid to travel on advanced parole, then maybe it's better that you wait until the next parts of your case are approved and, and go because you know, it's, it's very difficult. It's, it's nerve wracking to go through airport. And if you have a lot of anxiety and fear about it now, it's going to be worse when you're actually at the airport on your way back in. I, I don't want you to go through that. So if you're, you know, again, usually there's no problems. We have had every single person be able to return, but if you're worried about it, if you're anxious about it, then, then it's better to just stay put. That's what I would say. Okay. Um, Jason is asking if I file for ballot in this year and if Trump wins, can he deport me? Cause I don't have, um, he said he will deport every immigrant from Jason. Jason, uh, look, I am, you know, I know that this is what a lot of you are feeling right now, that if Trump gets elected president again, then he's going to deport everybody. 
But the bottom line is, is that there are rules. You know, uh, the good thing is, is that the president is not necessarily in charge of immigration applications. There are certain things that the president can do to affect, like make it, you know, like they might start, uh, uh, you know, giving more requests for evidence or, you know, try to make it harder to get approved for certain things, but they still have to follow the regulations and the regulations are written by Congress, not the president. And to deport somebody, it requires a lot of steps. So it's not like they can just throw you into a truck um, or put you on a plane without a hearing and all those things. So Jason, um, look, file it now because you get protection while the case is pending and you actually end up, you know, when your case is, is, is in process, you are put into a period of authorized stay. So that's one thing. So even if you get caught or something happens, like that's something that we can use in your defense. And second, you know, it, these things are are still going to be processed and approved, whether it's Trump or whether it's Biden, it's still going to work. OK, because as long as you fit the regulations and you fit the requirements, that's all that really matters. OK, so, Jason, if you've been waiting, don't wait any longer is my point. Two, one, two, two, four, eight, seven, nine, zero, seven, because, you know, things will probably be a little bit more difficult underneath Trump because he's going to stir up a lot of fear. <laughs> He's going to stir up a lot of fear. And at least if you have your applications in process, you're going to you're going to have a lot more peace of mind. Uh, you're going to get your work permit and you're going to have at least some 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 better safety net than not having anything at all. OK. Um, Jick. Uh, or Jick bartenders asking, my case is in immigration court. Is it possible to get approved for my green card? It's been 10 years since I'm in the country and paying my regular taxes from Jick bartender. Jick bartender and anyone who is in court. So whether you are going to be approved is going to depend on what you're asking the judge. If you're asking the judge for asylum uh, or if you're asking the judge for cancellation of removal, those are the main two things that, that people ask for in court. There are a couple of other things, but those are the main two things. But you can also ask for things outside of court and you can check to see if you qualify for a T visa or a VAWA or a U visa. And, uh, you know, all these things together can sometimes increase your chances for approval to see, you know, to basically give you more options on which to proceed. So if your case is in immigration court, sometimes just being here for 10 years is not enough. You do have to see if there's something else that's available to you. So, Jake, you can give us a call 212-248-7907. Kase boy, uh, VAWA was pending. I got a combo card. I traveled to my country, but never came back. I got married to a U.S. citizen and I overstayed six years. Well, Jick, in that case, since you married while your VAWA was pending, you're no longer eligible for that VAWA. But if you're married to a U.S. citizen, then you can start a new case with your U.S. citizen spouse. Um, you might need a waiver, though, because you overstayed and you left. Um Ooh, lots of messages on TikTok. Sorry, guys. Let me go down to the bottom to see what questions have been asked. My husband's I-485 was approved. How long before he will get his green card from user? Uh, user, usually within a month to two months as we get your green card. Um, went to my interview and I got a 221G because my DS-260 had errors. Officer asked to correct errors. Is it bad from Karina? Karina, that's actually pretty normal. If you go for your interview and, you know, like they, if the consular officer cannot approve your case right away, then it, then they basically put in a denial, but they'll give you a piece of paper that they'll tell you what you have to do to fix it. And once you fix it, you have to notify the consulate. And um, it's a little bit more difficult, but the case, the case can still get approved even if you initially get it denied there. If the U.S. citizen spouse is unable to open a bank account, what can be done from Amethyst? Amethyst, I'm assuming you're, you're asking about how to make marriage evidence, right? So if your U.S. citizen spouse can't open a bank account, first of all, I'm sorry to say that's a little bit of a red flag for me because the reasons why people can't open a bank account is because they have a lot of debt. Um, and my question to you, Amethyst, is did you know about that before, right? If you if you didn't know about that, then that could be a, a warning sign Um uh, and there might be other things that you don't know about and definitely call us if that's the case. But if your U.S. citizen spouse can't open a bank account and you are trying to make evidence, well, you can still file taxes. You can still do joint utility bills. You can get joint insurance. 
um, on your house or your car. Those things don't necessarily need a bank account, okay? Um, I hope this helps, Amethyst. Can you get removal proceedings terminated with a prima facie so I can get a travel permit from Zhao? Zhao um, Ariste, uh, Arakistan. Uh, Zhao, uh, yes. Sometimes, depending on the court that you're in, we have been able to terminate many removal proceedings with just a prima facie determination. Um, it, you know, we ask for something called prosecutorial discretion and we reach out to the prosecutor, you know, the DHS uh, attorney's office to see if they agree to close your case. Uh, and oftentimes we've been able to succeed with that. Some of the more difficult <laughs> offices around the country, though, they want to see that your your VAWA has been approved. So if they want to see your VAWA approved, then, um, you know, <laughs> then there's a little bit longer of a wait time. But many times, Joao, we can get your case terminated. And uh, then once your EOIR immigration cases, court case is terminated, then we can ask for your travel document. OK, 212-248-7907. Um, uh, VAWA case processing time, uh, it's approximately two and a half to three years. <laughs> Nina Huerta, my comment is too long. Um, lawyers, Hupper lost all documents we needed for I-601A. That was proof that Hubby worked for five years and we can never get those back. Oh, man, uh, Nina, I'm so sorry to hear that. Okay, so if your lawyer's office lost documents, um, did they really lose it or is it like hiding inside of a messy office? That's my first question. But there has to be other ways that you can prove your case, right? Uh, so it sounds like you're doing the I-601A waiver. And something important to remember is that when you're asking for the I-601A waiver, you have to show extreme hardship. But the extreme hardship can be financial. It could be psychological. It could be medical. It could be loss of educational opportunities. So it sounds like you lost documents to show, uh, to show proof of employment. Um, but you don't really need proof of employment for five years to do your I-601. You can still get creative and use other things. So Nina, first of all, maybe you need a new lawyer's office. I don't know. But, but even though you lost those documents, don't lose hope. You could still try to do other documents instead. Okay. 212-248-7907. My mom's I-130 was approved 20 years ago, but she never went to her biometrics exam. Can she do anything with it or start new? Um, from Ariana, Ariana, um, call us because it depends, you know, whether the I-130 is approved, um, whether it's still valid depends on a few factors, because sometimes if you choose to do consular processing and your case uh, gets sent to the consulate, but you don't do anything, then then it could be terminated, right? But if it's terminated, then sometimes we can still file a new I-130. Okay, Ariana, 212-248-7907. Uh, Renee, first lady, if you're out of status but get, got married to a permanent resident, um, Renee, you can't file for a green card yet. You can only do an I-130. Um, you, the best case scenario is for you to wait to, to see if your spouse becomes a U.S. citizen, because then that way you don't have to leave the country and, and, and uh, to do your green card and you can file the I-485 right away. However, if you are out of status and you married a green card holder, you can still get your green card. You can still do something called the I-601A waiver and, and, and go to process in your country and come back. But if you're suffering in your marriage, if your spouse is controlling, they're, they're verbally abusive, they curse you, they tell you that you're not being a good wife, you know, they don't want to file for you, that it's your fault for being out of status. These may help you qualify for a VAWA and you, it doesn't matter if you're out of status or that they're a green card holder, we can still file for you. Now, we would just have a little bit of a wait time to submit the I-485 application. Um... All right. Green card holder mom applied for 27 year old son. Kisses in NBC since 2022. How long to wait from Aisha's collection? Um, Aisha's collection just depends on the visa bulletin. Um, also, I don't know when, when, when was this case, case, case filed? Uh, it's going to depend on that a little bit. K and J, T visa processing time, please. K and J, uh, T visas are taking about a year to a year and a half to process. So it's the quickest processing case that we have at the moment. Um, 
How long does it take for a visa call? Almost 17 years now from Jackson uh, Lacal. Jackson, um, it, it might depend on your category. So if you're a sibling or an adult married child, then your wait time is very long. Waved through entry, been waiting four years post interview in RFE from user. Um, definitely, there, you probably should make some service inquiries on your case. Um, if my valid gets denied and I appeal it, can I go to court? Um, from Chantal. Chantal, if your valid gets denied and you appeal, usually that doesn't go to court, um, but it does get appealed to the BIA. There's no, not usually a, a hearing for that. Um, but maybe you were asking Chantel whether you get put into removal proceedings and we haven't seen any of our valid cases. I haven't, I have never heard of valid cases be put into removal unless there's like a serious crime, um, that the client has committed. Uh, let's see. Can a parent who is a U.S. citizen file for a children who is older than 21, but has DACA from Ilia Aranda, um, Ilia? Um, you can file, you can file. However, because your child is over 21, they're going to have to wait a long time um, and they're out of status. So they'll have to probably do a waiver um, if they have, uh, they'll probably, they probably have to do a waiver. So, um, but they'll also probably have to process out of the U.S. So anyway, Ilya, call us 212-248-7907. Um, AJ Portillo, um, what type of documents, photos should I get to prove that I'm a person with good moral character to help my T visa application from AJ Portillo? Portillo, uh, AJ, this is the great news about the T visa case. You don't actually have to show that you have good moral character. Obviously we don't, if you have any criminal history, we need to analyze it. But the beauty of the T visa case is that you don't have to show good moral character. It's a lot more forgiving than the VAWA case or for, for other, it's a lot more forgiving than some other cases. Um, and generally speaking, we just want you to give us your certificates of disposition if you have any criminal history. Sometimes we can do waivers if this, those are necessary. But for the T visa itself, um, it's actually not required for us to show that you have good moral character. Um, Amber, uh, I'm your client for VAWA and I recommended my sister to your firm. She's in the process with her readback for the T visa soon. I just want to know the timeline for T visa decision. Um, so the the entire amber thank you for being a client and for referring your sister um the whole timeline for the t visa for the decision is actually very quick we're seeing right now an average of one year to one and a half years now in our firm as far as the readback uh once the readback is done we do multiple levels of edits and reviews with the attorneys and the paralegal team that can still take a little bit of time, but if there's any confusion about the process or any unhappiness, just call us, uh, have your sister call us, Amber, okay? Again, thank you for being a client and, and um, uh, thank you for putting your trust in us, Amber. Um, Due to an emergency, I left during my I-485 application. Um, I got scheduled for an interview, but I left without advanced parole. Any help from Amarils? Um, so if you filed your I-485 and you left the country without getting advanced parole, your I-485 is actually going to be considered abandoned because you left without advanced parole. So the best thing for you to do is for you to ask for your case to be transferred to the NBC so you can go for an interview at the consulate, but it'll probably take at least a year and a half for that process to be transferred, okay? Um, I'm from Trinidad. How can I get a work permit from Rachel Gilbert? All right, this question is very, very common. If you're in the US and you wanna get a work permit, the first thing that we have to look at is to see whether you qualify for anything else that that allows you to get a work permit because you can't just apply for a work permit. You actually have to show that you qualify for an underlying case. That underlying case can be VAWA, can be T visa, can be a U visa, can be like asylum. It could be so many different things. So you actually have to submit some sort of immigration application and that will usually allow you to file for a work permit um, afterwards or at the same time. So the first inquiry is to see what you what you qualify for. Um, I applied my U visa in 2017. Still no update. How much longer? 
from Multani. Uh, Multani, if it's 2017, I would say within a few years, you'll get a decision. My parents' application, we put the wrong date of birth for my sibling in, in, in the visa, how it can be fixed from Jobert. Um, Jobert, you might have to ask for a renewal, um, a replacement to fix that. But it depends on where the error was, because if you made the error at the very beginning of the case, then that might be a little bit more difficult to fix. What are the documents required for VAWA for my wife? I don't want her to know about the VAWA process. Well, the most important thing that you want to get for your VAWA case is proof that you're married and proof that your, uh, your spouse is a U.S. citizen or a uh, green card holder. So those are usually the documents that you might need to ask your spouse for. But once you have that, most other documents you can get by yourself, like, you know, proofs of marriage, proofs of the abuse. Those are the sort of things uh, that, that you don't necessarily always need to ask your spouse for help on. Um, is there a way for my mom to get a green card without having to go back to her country from Europe, but cross the border from Ariana? Um, Ariana, uh, yes, there might be ways. And the first thing to do is for your mom to do a case evaluation because for parents, what we like to look at is to see, you know, we don't want parents to go back because usually if a parent has overstayed by a long time or they entered illegally, they may not qualify for a waiver through their child. So usually that's why we have to look at visas like the, the T visa or the U visa or some other thing. So Ariana, what I would say is to call us and my contact number is 212-248-7907. Okay. All right, guys, that is all the time that I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this informative. I hope this was useful. And uh, I hope you uh, it helped put you at a little bit of ease through this immigration process. Now, if you want to make an appointment with us, if you want to explore your options further, the best way to get in touch with us is to call us directly at 212-248-7907. We have no other phone number. Please don't fall prey to the scammers online. There are a lot of people imitating me and impersonating me, but we only have one phone number. Uh, we don't have WhatsApp. We don't have Telegram. Um, and uh, our official Instagram and Facebook pages have the check marks next to them. And uh, obviously, there's only one TikTok, okay? Uh, so anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Please also, my request to you is that if you find my videos helpful, please share my videos with those that you care about, where you think it might help their lives, because you never know when this sort of information can help literally save someone's life. Okay. All right. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. And God bless. Take care.